First bit of news out of Georgia, USA. Runner who slapped reporter's butt on live TV identified as youth minister. Tommy Calloway is both a youth group leader at his church and a Boy Scout leader. Um, he was running a 10K in Georgia. As he's running by, he sees a news anchor. Everyone's, you know, waving to the camera that's in front of her. Uh, he decides he's going to walk up to this news anchor and just slap her hard on the butt. Uh, you can see in her face, she's completely devastated. Um, she tweets about it, right? So it gets a lot of attention, and people want to know who this guy was. They were able to track him down. Lo and behold, he's a youth minister um, at his church, and they start calling him out. Well, he reaches out to her. He tries to apologize, and she says, you know, it doesn't matter if you intended to hurt me or not. The fact is you did, and you don't get to just touch women's bodies whenever you feel like it. Um, and so she filed the police report. It's in the police hands. And Armin, do you have the video on it? Yeah, but the main reason why this is on Atheist Republic before less before I show the video is because this guy was found to be a youth minister, right? Yes. Okay, so, uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll comment on that, but let me just get the video first. All right, so let me see if the video is showing on the screen properly. No, it's not. Oh yeah, I know what to do. Okay, so let me just play the video. Let me know. Go, let me go, Let me know if you have the audio. Okay. Okay, it's playing right now. Thirty seconds. Let me go back. Oh, okay. So she, first, she's laughing. This is this is before she gets slapped on the butt. Everybody is just like looking at the camera and saying hi. Oh, there it is. Ooh. It's very exciting. Um, you, oh my gosh, she got she was so happy. Uh, let me go back a little bit when she gets shocked. Like some guy just comes running by and she just he just slaps her on the butt and her mood completely chased. Let me just show you the one moment one more time. Like, oh my god, why would you do that? Her face breaks my heart. Yeah, her face is like she was so happy, she was so exciting. Look, oh no. And then she her tweets is on the screen and so on the screen now. So her tweet is saying to the man who smacked my butt on live TV this morning, you violated, objectified, and embarrassed me. No woman should ever have to put up with this at work or anywhere. Do better. What an idiot! This guy doesn't know that he was on live TV. Like obviously, people are going to be uh, be able to identify them. Like why? Like how? Right. What goes through your mind to even be like, you know what? This is a good idea right now. Just like smack someone's butt like just while running past them let me just continue the last few seconds of the video see if there's anything else shows up this guy's a youth minister right wow yes all right let me go back to the video i have of us close this one that was and so so what do you think about him being a youth minister is that like a fair thing to point or I th absolutely, absolutely. I think it's a fair thing to point out. Um, I think that whenever you're in the business of teaching other people about morality right. um, and, and of that nature, it absolutely affects you. You, oh. y Your actions mm. um, are, are constantly under a magnifying glass. People so look up to you. You're the one teaching other people. That's, that's the role he chose to play. I did want to point out what his lawyer said about but him. But before, before you do, Ali, I forgot that some people from that are not from United States or Western countries might not know what a youth minister is. So, uh -huh. like, yeah, so we might want to tell people what is a youth minister. Yeah, so a youth minister is a preacher for anyone in the church 17 years and younger. Um, he's the one that solely, you know, puts together events for youth groups, uh, preaches to the youth, um, and sets, sets kind of the role for what they get t taught in Sunday school and things like that. Right. Okay. So, uh, Sorry, from continue. his lawyer, he yeah. says, this man is a loving fa husband, father, who is very active in his community and local church, insisting he was working with those involved to correct the situations. And while we regret the situation, Mr. Calloway did not act with any criminal intentions. And I want to say, like, even as a lawyer, you have to understand, even if he wasn't trying to act with any criminal intentions, you can't just go around violating people. Wait, how do you slap someone's butt? without their permission, without trying to act with any criminal intention. Exactly. Like, how does that work? Like, like if I come and rob your house 
and my lawyer says, sorry, we ro he ro my client robbed your house, but he didn't have any criminal intent. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> that's, that's exactly <laughs> what his lawyer is trying to say here. No, it's but, ridiculous. <laughs> no, but... But if this guy's, I mean, the view minister aside, the lawyer, I'm, I'm pretty sure the lawyer is smarter in law stuff than me and you guys. So what, what is it? Like, I, what? Like, how's that? What? Can we try to steal man this guy and try to see why would he say something? Maybe this guy's case was so bad that he didn't have anything else to say. <laughs> that was just the best thing that he could His come up with. His client was caught literally red handed right here yeah. on on the news, uh, live, live TV. So. Right. I, I don't, don't know. I don't, okay, so Ryan, the top comment is from Ryan. He's saying, that can't be true. He's a minister. He slapped a girl's butt, not a little boy's butt. Uh, so it's a minister joke. Um, Nelson, uh, okay, so my, my comment on this, like a lot of people, here's the thing that we need to be careful about as atheist activists, right? The point about stories like this is not that if you are a minister... Or if you're a religious leader, that means you're more likely to be immoral, right? Right. We, we're not saying that. And even if we, are, we were saying that, we can't point to anecdotal stories like this to make that case. Like you, the only way you could make it, make a point like that is if you are pointing at statistics. You can't point to stories like this and be like, oh, here's another proof or evidence that, oh, religious leaders are immoral, right? The only way you right. could ever do that is actually not just a lot of data, but data that is collected in an unbiased way and analyzed in a careful way, right? Uh, but what the stories like this do point to is not that ministers are less moral, maybe statistic, but this one, is that religion, at least it, what it does is that religion doesn't necessarily give you morality, right? It doesn't, that's the, what you could do with stories like this. That's a safe claim to make with stories like this, right? So for people that say religion is the guide to morality and makes your life more moral, uh, stories like this doesn't say that statistically these people are less moral, but what you can say that this shows that they're not more moral or doesn't necessarily, you know, make you a moral person just because you have religion. Now, I would argue that it's actually more likely to make you less moral because it gives you a license to sin. And that's a hypothesis. It's not a theory because I, I'm not providing you guys with any evidence or statistics, right? So that's just a hypothesis. My hypothesis is that religions that give you a way out that you can sin and then you could go ask for forgiveness and then you're clear, probably give you a reason to sin with immunity, with a sense of immunity. Because uh, I'm good with Jesus. I could do things that, you know. Um, but again, that's a hypothesis, not a theory, because I'm not providing you guys with any theory or any statistics, right? Sorry, any evidence or any statistics. So Nelson is saying, while we regret the situation... Oh, so Nelson is quoting the lawyer and saying, um, while we regret the situation, Mr. Callaway did not act with criminal intentions. Uh, so he's making fun of that by uh, Nelson is saying, yes, your honor, I robbed the, oh, he robbed the liquor store, but I, did, I didn't do it with any criminal intention. There you so, go. Yeah, so the, the, Nelson is basically making the exact point I made. All right. Shabam, did you want to add anything to this? This is... No. I'm yeah. fine. Okay. Your, your idea is not very good today, Shapam, so I hope we can fix it. But it's better now than mm -hmm. when we went on stream. Um, and another thing, by, by the way, guys, I'm, I can tell you, like, for people that haven't experienced somebody doing this to them, this might not seem like that big of a deal. But I can tell you, I've experienced this, and I can tell you it's a big deal. I, when, I was a, when I was a kid, like a kid, teenager, I don't know. Um, how old was I? I forgot. But I was I was in um, early high school. Uh, I remember coming, uh, getting a taxi, right, being in a cab, uh, trying to get home, and the taxi driver, and this is back in Iran, he puts his hand on my lap, right, on my leg, and he starts, you know, going up, up and down my leg, and he's saying like, "Where do you want me to take you?" You know, uh, you know, dear, or something like weird like that. 
And I was like, I want to get out. And he's like, no, no. And he starts to keep rubbing my legs. Like, no, no, come tell me. I can take you wherever you want. I'm like, oh, gosh. I don't like, get me out. I want to get out. I want to get out. I want to get out. And he, I started making a huge noise and stuff. And like, he just pulls over and I get out. And I just sit there in the side of the street. And I'm like, so, sh I didn't, before then, I didn't know that this kind of stuff could happen to like boys and stuff, right? I was so... I mean, okay, here's, this is how bad it, it felt. Like, if, if a whole bunch of people started beating me up, right, I would go home and I would tell everybody. I would call the cops. I would tell my parents. Um, but this was so... This was so much worse, even though it wasn't anything physical, that I, I at that point, I was felt so, you know, unmasculine and so you know, humiliated that I thought that I'm going to take this to my grave. You know what I mean? Like, I thought, like, if anybody ever found out what happened to me, this would be the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to me. And I will yeah. never, like, I would have rather if a whole bunch of people sh beat the shit out of me. Oh, my God, I swear. Sorry. This whole YouTube channel, like, video got ru ruined. But I would have preferred that happen. And I went out and, you know, I wouldn't be embarrassed. I would tell my parents. I would have preferred that. I would have told the police. But this was so disgusting and so humiliating that I was hurt more. And I couldn't even tell anybody about it. Right? That's how humiliating it was. So it's it's hard to explain the feeling that you get when somebody does that to you. Unless unless it happens to you. So right. and it, and it, unless it's... And this is happens from from somebody that you don't want, right? Like you can't exp you can't compare it to somebody doing this to you w that you welcome it. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Um, anyways, that's just my experience. Anyways, should I? Sorry, I take too long on this story. Let no, me, it's okay. Yeah. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.